Joining us now from Kiev, Ukraine, NBC News chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel. Richard, what's the latest on the ground? So here in Kiev, the government has relaxed a curfew that was in place all weekend. It was a blanket curfew, the curfew this weekend. People were uh, discouraged from leaving their houses. Now they're lining up in front of stores. They're going to the groceries. They're going to bakeries. If they can find them, they're stocking up on supplies. Uh, the, key, the curfew will be reimposed this evening around 10 o'clock and continue until 8 in the morning. Uh, but this city, as you said, remains under the government's control. There are many military positions in the city, and people here are in good spirits. They believe that the country thus far uh, is putting up a stiff fight, that they are able to uh, push back the Russians, and they are feeling that, they, if, in, if anything, they're feeling that they are winning. Uh, the Russians are continuing to advance along three different lines of attack, one from the north, heading toward this city, and there is a very long uh, and heavily armored military convoy uh, outside of the city. The second uh, line of attack pushing toward uh, Kharkiv, and uh, briefly, uh, Russian forces did manage to penetrate a part of the city. They were also repelled. And then the, the third line of attack is in, uh, in the south, uh, pushing up from Crimea. But there have been numerous logistical challenges. This uh, invasion has not gone according to Putin's plan, apparently, and there are uh, reports and videos of Russian troops running out of fuel, breaking down by the side mm -hmm. of the road, being taunted by, by Ukrainians. Uh, so, uh, so far, the Ukrainians feel that they are entering these uh, peace talks uh, in which they are asking for a ceasefire with a, with a very strong hand. So, uh, Richard, you know better than anybody else that it is hard to, to make clear pronouncements about how a war is going while in the fog of war. What can you tell us, uh, what can you tell us about uh, the information you've received from officials, from military uh, operators about uh, whether, in fact, uh, the Russian advances are going more slowly than expected, whether they're having trouble with equipment, whether they're, they're meeting much fiercer resistance than originally expected, the sort of things we're hearing uh, in the news in the United States and around the world. But I'm curious, what are you hearing on the ground there more specifically? So I'm hearing confirmation of all the things that you just mentioned, that the Ukrainian resistance has been stiffer than the Russians uh, expected, that the Ukrainians have been able to hold their territory, that the Ukrainians have not been forced to go underground and create some sort of guerrilla resistance, which many thought by day five they would have to do. Uh, instead, the Ukrainians are still operating openly, and they are getting resupplied uh, from many countries ar around the world. But uh, U.S. Uh, officials uh, that, that, that we've been speaking to, not just me, but others at NBC, are cautious. Are cautioning that these are still very early days, that the Ukrainians might feel confident right now because we are still only on day five, but that Russia has a lot more power that it can send into this fight. About a third of all of the Russian troops that they had positioned around Ukraine are still uh, in a position to be put in to battle. They haven't yet been sent to the front lines, they haven't been sent into this country. There is that massive convoy outside of Kiev that could be heading uh, this way if it, if it receives the order to. And there, there, there is this psychological factor. Well, how is Vladimir Putin going to react? U.S. officials are worried that since he has uh, experienced early setbacks, that he could escalate by using uh, heavier munitions, that he could fire artillery or uh, unguided kinds of weapons against uh, against this city or, or other cities and, and increase the, the level of assault and make it a much more punishing assault against the civilian population. So uh, it, the Ukrainians have been putting up resistance, but it is still very early days, and they do not think that Russia is going to throw in the towel and still has the numerical and technological logical advantage. Uh, Richard, uh, many Americans, uh, many people that, that have been emailing, texting, calling me this weekend, again, just in the initial stages, you're exactly right, this could change very quickly, uh, but in the early stages are shocked by uh, the character of, of the Ukrainians, by the fierceness of the Ukrainians, uh, by, by the contempt that they have for Vladimir Putin and Russia. Uh, instead of being fearful, what, what can you can, can you uh, give us uh, give us some background 
about where that comes from. This is a country that not so long ago was split between its affinities for Russia and the West. What's happening? Well, uh, when, when we leave here, we're on our way to go meet some young Ukrainians who are gathering together. They're collecting bottles right now, and they're meeting so that they can start filling up Molotov cocktails. And there are many, if you look at social media in this country, they're putting out diagrams of where you should throw Molotov cocktails against different types of Russian, Russian transport or armored vehicles to hit the hatches, to go for the guns. So they are rallying uh, behind their army and they are rallying on a popular level. They are preparing for street to street battles and and and, and preparing themselves with 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 firebombs to take on the Russian military. Uh, it comes from the fact that eight years ago in the city, people did a, a similar kind of street demonstration with Molotov cocktails and, and, and sticks and bricks. And they stood up to Russian backed riot police and they threw out the pro Russian dictator. And for the last eight years, they have been moving toward Europe. They've been mo moving toward democracy and they like where it is heading and they do not want to go back to living under Russian rule. They know exactly what that would mean. They know exactly the kind of repression that they would face. They hear the reports that Russia ha has reported kill lists for people who might be trying to organize an underground resistance, the same kind of people who are putting together the Molotov cocktails right now. So they, they are in a fight for their political survival, and many here believe for their actual survival. So they, they, they're going all in. And there are Russians doing the same in Russia, by the way. NBC's Richard Engel live from Ukraine's capital. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.